Hey y'all, Rochelle here, your delightful crafter. Um, so I started this video and then I realized that I had not opened. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with watercolor, you'll understand in a little bit. Um, a lot of um, uh, pan paints come wrapped and it was just a really long process and I had forgot to unwrap everything. And um, since I'm doing this on my phone, I don't want to spend all the time doing editing. Um, so I had to stop and start all over. Um, this is a, a late video. Um, this is something I'd wanted to bring to you guys, um, I guess about two, three weeks ago when I initially got my Daniel Smith's and my, um, St. Petersburg's and I just never got around to it because I was just busy with work. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you stick around a spell. Uh, don't forget to leave any comments or questions in um, the you know the comment section below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, like, hit the subscribe button, and ding the bell next door if you want to get any notifications of future videos. Uh, I just want to put this out there. I am in no means, not even close to being an expert or even like mediocre watercolorist. I'm... I'm new. I am not even good at it, but it's something that I've wanted to try and you know you can never improve if you never start. I've been collecting the stuff for about six to eight months and just haven't had the time to do it, but we are making time today. I had wanted to start this video this morning, but we just it just didn't happen. So I am sitting down. I am for the most part ready to go. Uh, everything in this video I have purchased with my own funds. Uh, there's an order from, well, the Jane Davenport's are from Michael's. I got those yesterday. My Daniel Smith's came from both Amazon and Dick Blick. My White Knights, uh, my St. Petersburg White Knights came all the way from Russia. The Paul Rubens, these have been, uh, being featured in a lot of hauls and reviews lately and I wanted to give them a try as well. Those come from China and I think I ordered, I either ordered those on Amazon, you can also find them on AliExpress, but I think it's cheaper on Amazon and guys here comes Pancake. Hey sweetie, come here. You, you can't be up here today sweetheart. I'm sorry. He'll probably jump back up, uh, up here because Oh, now he's going to go over there and pout on the... Yeah, he's going to pout. Anyway, we're just going to do some swatching. I will share whatever information that I know about watercolor. And I will also link in the description a bunch of YouTube channels that I follow with people who are very knowledgeable in watercolor if you want to learn more. Because I, I know only enough to be dangerous and that's about it. So, um, if there's people out there that know more than I do and I make a mistake, please correct me in the, in the comments below. Um, and, um, so keep your fingers crossed guys, because I have no idea how this video is going to turn out. I should technically go get a marker and, you know, make lines on here to, um, to show, you know, opacity. Um, I'll try and explain that a little bit. I, I don't want to get too in-depth because then this video would be really long and I don't want to bore anybody. So with that being said, let's get started. I am using, this is just a watercolor paper that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby. It's the Pro ProArt um, watercolor. It's a 140 pound, 300 GSM. This is a cold press, so it is, it is rough. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, watercolor paper comes in diff many different forms. Uh, you have hot press, cold press, there's more. If anyone else knows, please again add it in the description. A cold press is going to have more of a rough texture, a hot press is going to be much smoother and, and, and that really affects how the paper moves on your, uh, how the watercolor moves on your paper. So I'm just putting that out there. Also. With these Jane Davenports, I noticed they are not really labeled like traditional watercolors, and I didn't see any pigment information. I will attempt to hunt those down later, maybe. Not quite sure yet. And um, 
No, seriously, Pancake, I don't have time for this. Hold on, guys. Come here. You can't be up here. Get in my lap. You can stay in my lap. Stay there. Okay. So we're going to start with these water, uh, these Jane Davenports. I picked these up yesterday at Michael's. Uh, they were 50% off, and then I had another 20% off from Joann's. These are the neutral um, set, and I think there's three others. I'm not positive because I don't know a lot about uh, the Jane Davenport watercolors. And, um, and yeah. Anyway, with that said, let's get started. I will share with you what I know they have the colors listed to be. Um, it does come with a little um, swatch card. However, this has like a glossy film to it. And I don't believe it's not watercolor paper. So we're going to actually swatch it on here and the watercolor paper so you can see how differently it works. So we're going to bring these down here. Now these are an extruded paint. And an extruded paint has more like um, binders and fillers and it affects... Um, how the watercolors work. Um, the Paul Rubens are a poured paint and I'll kind of try to share the difference in the two when I get to those. The same with, well, no, I have the White Knights in the full pans, but I'm not dragging those out. And then the Daniel Smith are tube paints that I have put in my little uh, watercolor palette there. And yeah, so let's get started here with these Jane Davenports. Uh, get my stuff ready here. Um, a lot of pan paints come wrapped up like little candies and so I took the little candy wrappers off and so I can um, use them later in um, a swatch book that I'm going to be making. This is my um, silver um, brush black velvet number six round. We're gonna get it wet. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start. Um, I don't want to contaminate. These seem to activate fairly quickly. Pancake, you're not getting up there. No. He's being a little stinker head today. I don't know if you can see the the dab, but it's, you know, some of these activate super quick. And so you want to make sure you keep your brush clean so you're not cross-contaminating. Um, I believe this particular set is supposed to be really good for, like, doing skin tones. And I have a feeling this is going to be a long video. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. If it is, I do apologize in advance to you guys. So we're going to start on the swatch card that comes with. And um, let's see what they, how they react. I want to get enough water on here. This is going to be hard to do one-handed because Pancake really wants to get up here on the... No. No. I want to try and get a mass tone. Oh, come on. This is really pigmented. Uh, uh, I want to try and get a mass tone and then like a wash, but I don't think I'm going to be able to really pull that off on this swatch card that was came with this set. Yeah, this is not going to be fun with him in my lap. I'm just putting that out there. Wow. I like the colors so far. They're really bright and um, vivid. I think this blue is going to react a little different because I don't have as much water on the brush. This is not how I want to do this. He is determined to get on the table and so I have to make him stay on my lap. Not, yeah, not at all how I want to do this. Okay. Oh, I like how that moved. So, um, when I get to the Paul Rubens, 
I'll um, show you what I was talking about as far as pigments go. A lot of quality paints will share the pigments so that um, you can tell if you have too many pigments and then you try to mix two different colors that have multiple pigments in it, they'll usually create like a muddy, not a very pretty uh, color. And, um, and then, uh, yeah, sorry guys. I'm loving that blue. So this is mango, apple, blueberry, dove, unicorn. The next one is raven. So I'm going to assume that's going to be a black. really dirty Let's see if I can and then once I finish this one I'm gonna do a swatch here on the actual watercolor paper so you can kind of see how differently they act this is vitamin C sand buff spice kiss kiss and cocoa So um, I like to follow, um, if I can think, I'm horrible, I know all the channels I love to watch, but when I go to try and talk about them, I absolutely forget the names, um, I have, I get like absolute mind block. Um, I like The Mind of Watercolor, I like Mini Smalls, I watch Becca Hilburn, she does a lot of comic strip uh, painting, but she's a really great artist. Um, there's Emily something and I can't think of her name I like her but she can have a uh, she can have her, her conversations <laughs> she she doesn't exactly have a PG vocabulary but she has a really neat personality so I like to watch her um, there uh, um, I should have opened up my YouTube so that I could hunt down some of the channels. Oh, The Frugal Crafter, I like her. And um, like I said, right now I can't think of a lot of the ones. I watch so many channels, it's not even funny. But I will definitely link in the description to um, a lot of the channels I follow because they're very knowledgeable. A lot of them are professional watercolorists, so um, they can really, you know, teach you a lot that I cannot. Um, oh, Dr. Otto Cano. Um, she's, she's great. Pancake, I can't do, no, get down. Okay, so that is on the, the, um, the swatch card that came. Now we're going to actually go on actual watercolor paper. Okay, so this is the, the mango I want to do a mass tone and then I want to do uh, try to do a wash let's see go like that let's see if I can get it to move there we go it looks completely different on watercolor paper this is the apple Next is the blueberry. I have a feeling I'm going to have to do these videos, uh, each one of these, um, in a different video because um, otherwise we're going to be here all night long and I just don't want to do that to y'all. So... This is the Dove.
Oh, so that doesn't really move very well. My water is really nasty. I'm definitely going to have to do new water for the next, um, the next uh, set that I do. And you really can't see the dove. It's white. Um, they say white is really a just a freebie that costs the companies no money. Um, and they you'll rarely see any watercolors that actually uses white in their um, painting. They'll usually do like um, a gouache or something like that to, uh, or use just, just use the, the um, water to get different tones and um, values of the same color. That was the Raven. This is the Vitamin C. I'm trying to be fast because I want to, uh, so you can see how it kind of travels. I think it's, it's not called traveling, it's called, um, shoot. Like I said guys, I don't know, Pancake, I can't play this game with you, sir. He is, he is determined to be up in my lap and that is not a good thing right now. That one is sand. This next one is buff. I don't know if you can hear my background music. I try to keep it low because I don't want YouTube to like, like tag me for like copyright, but I love Lauren Daigle. And so she's playing in the background. Oh shoot, I didn't do a, darn me. Here, let's do this. There we go. See if it moves, yeah. Not as good as I want it to. No pancake. This next one is Kiss Kiss. Oh, he's gonna get into everything. He's gonna make this really difficult. And then this last one is Coco. I can't sing, guys, just saying. And so that is the Jane Davenport's uh, Neutral Palette. And um, you can kind of see a big difference how they react on the swatch card that it came with and on actual watercolor paper. There's more movement, more, you know, gradation um, in the colors. Definitely prettier on the watercolor paper. Um, I don't see a lot of granulation. Um, granulation is where the pigments in the paint kind of settle and you see like a spotty, a spotty look. And that's, you know, depending on the look you're going for, that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I think it depends on, um, again, you know, the look you're going for. Some artists do not like granulation. Some of them actually look for it. And um, we'll see some when we, I know we'll see some when we do the Daniel Smith because I'm doing Primatech colors and they're from natural, um, like gemstone, gemstones. So there's, they have to grind it down really fine. So they still never get it like so fine that it's just a solid wash. But so anyway, that is the Jane Davenport neutral palette. And um, like I said, I don't have the pigment information. I'll point out in the next video, the next video I'm going to do the Paul Rubens. Um, again, I got these ones on those ones on Amazon. These Jane Davenport's, I got them on sale yesterday at Michael's and then an additional coupon from Joann's on top of that. So, so yeah. So this is my first review, guys. Um, well, not really review, just kind of like an unboxing. Um, I, I'm not knowledgeable enough to really review. So just putting that out there. Anyway, so I'm going to end this here. I will do another video of the Paul Rubens. And then um, I'll do a third video 
with the White Knights and the Daniel Smiths that I picked up. Um, and yeah, again, um, please give me a thumbs up like. Again, I'm not com not claiming to be an expert at all, so please don't attack me for not having lots of knowledge or you know incorrect information. I'm I am a total novice. So as I start this watercolor journey, we are going to do it together because again, I I have no clue. Just with the little bits that I've picked up on all the channels that I follow, and again. When this initially posts, the the links to all the channels I follow won't be there, but I will be adding them in there because they're really great channels to follow, especially if you want to learn more about watercolor. Any hoo -ha, um, until the next video, which should hopefully be in the next hour or so. Hope you have a great weekend, and as always, happy crafting. Bye-bye.